Good afternoon. Welcome to today's virtual program from the Newark Public Library, Growing Up in Newark, the photos of Steve Niferatos. I'm Tom Ankner, the director of the Charles F. Cummings New Jersey Information Center at the Newark Public Library. Before we get started, I just wanted to encourage you all to fill out your census forms. Filling out the census is one small but very important thing everyone can do right now to help our city and our communities. If you haven't done so yet, please go to my2020census.gov and fill out the brief questionnaire. The information you provide affects funding for health care, transportation, your local schools, and many other needs. Remember, my2020census.gov. It is safe, secure. <laughs> well, let's get started. Our guests today are Stephen Nicaraguas and Roseanne Gasparinetti. Steve grew up in Newark in the 50s and 60s and graduated from Barringer High School in 1966. The photos we will be viewing today are photos he has shared on Facebook, either through his own Facebook page or through the group Newark, New Jersey, the 50s, 60s, 70s. Roseanne is the president of the Barringer High School Alumni Association and also a graduate of Barringer High, of course, in 1959. Steve and Roseanne, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, everybody. Hi. Nice to be here and glad to be participating in this. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, good. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay, so Steve, the photos you share on Facebook portray a certain time and place really well, I think. Um, we, had a, we had a program a couple of weeks ago where we showed the Berg photos. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're a collection yes. that were taken by Dr. Samuel Berg around the same time your, many of your photos were taken, but they're very different from your photos because his interest was not in people. His interest was in buildings and structures. Right. So they, there are very few people in his pictures. Your picture, and they're wonderful pictures, but they're just very different from yours. Your pictures, on the other hand, are pictures of people. They're pictures of how people live their lives. Um, so I, I just um, wanted to ask you, um, uh, so most of the photos that were not, were actually not taken by you. They were photos, some of them are photos of you, some of them are photos from newspapers. Uh, I think some of them were taken by you, but not all of them. Where did you, where did you get most of those photos? Uh, some of them are from my parents taking photos when we were younger. Uh, some are from uh, my sister took some photos of when we were younger. She was into photography and she was, uh, oh, okay. she has an artsy uh, background. She's an art side graduate. And uh, also uh, some of my friends took some of the photos and we shared them back and forth. So that's probably most of them, you know, between my family, myself, and my sister, and my friends. That's most, okay. of, most of the photos. Some might be from newspaper clippings that I had taken also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they show, they show um, kind of an historian's eye. I mean, they're not really, they're not all about you personally. Like some of them, some of them are family photos. I have some family photos to show, and some of them are friends of yours and hanging out. Okay. But some of them are, are like more history, like things, there are photos of Barringer High that I'm going to be showing that were taken long before you were a student there, but that they, you know, because you were a kind of, his, you're a historian of Barringer High in a sense, too. Uh, yeah. And Earth War. So, uh, there are some pictures there, too. That's, that's one of the things I liked about them, too. Well, the, the plug have to, will have to go to Barringer High School itself for that, because a lot of those older photos, which are mm -hmm. wonderful, I took from the Barringer archives. We have a plethora of, of these photos. I mean, you couldn't even count all of them. So if I saw something that caught my eye, I would take a picture of it. And there's probably one image there of the old Barringer and the new Barringer together. I'm not sure if you have that one. But that was actually from the 1965 yearbook that I had. Oh, is that the overhead shot? Yes. Right. Yes, yeah. I have that. That's one of the photos I'm going to show. Yeah, I love that. I love that photo, actually. It shows the old school, the new school, and the cathedral, and, and maybe the a little bit of the yeah. park. Yeah. yeah. So, so, Roseanne, you're the president of the Barringer High School yeah. uh, Alumni yeah. Association. Um, so, talk a little bit about what you do there. And you, Barringer is kind of unique in that they have their own archive. They don't, you know, they have a big yes. archive at the high school. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. We have, uh, we have uh, as Steve said, we have a plethora of, of material and archival stuff that we just constantly are using for research. When we, we do a newsletter twice a year, we always, always pick something from the to write about. I can send you some of them. This last one, we did a story about Margaret Colt, who was mm -hmm. a revered English teacher 
at Barringer and, and all the things that she did to help Barringer. So that's part of it, what we do. And um, this, the picture that Steve was talking about where we have the, the two schools together, in a lot of those pictures in the background is the cathedral, half done, only one spire up, you know, and just at, at different stages of construction. So all of that, all of that is there. Um, we did uh, we did a whole story on uh, the Mendelssohn bus that was right outside of the school, and so many things that took place there. Steve had so many pictures of track being run there, starting at the starting right the train and going forward. Uh, classes were held outside, and uh, we have pictures of classes from the early 50s just having lunch there. There's another picture of Pat Restaino in my class from my class 59 sitting in the park. So we've always had the park intertwined with our school. It was always part of everything that we did. And, uh, and we, we still continue to do that now. We also, when the, um, when the association first started, they instituted a, a scholarship program. That was one of the first things that they did. It was started with only a hundred dollars for each, for uh, three or four students. We're now up to, we give them at that, we were given out four $1,000 scholarships. And we're doing that this year too, in spite of the difficulties of getting it all done with, you know, with the coronavirus. So we enjoy doing that. We love having the students stop in to the archive room. We get them, walk them around. We show them the things about the school, tell them the history of the school, tell them about the state of New Jersey and the importance of the fact that Barringer was the first high school in the city and the state and how important that was and why that tradition has carried on so much. We had a history class this past year in, this, in the school. One of the uh, history teachers took his uh, seniors and juniors down to the archive room and we went through the whole thing of, uh, of talking about the history of the school and how it came about when we had uh, displays there with some of the pictures from the journals, some of the pictures of the old school, some of the new school, uh, up and through um, everything that the school did during World War II, World War I. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there and we, we never, never run out of material to write about or to talk about. And we welcome everybody coming in there. We have, uh, we enjoy that the most. We also have a very, very good rapport with the administration in the school. Dr. Vilas has been extremely helpful and cooperative. So that makes, that makes life a lot easier for us. We, um, you know, we get down there, we do what we have to do. And we know that if we have a problem or a concern, we can go to him and uh, things have been working out really, really well. So did I leave anything out, Steve? <laughs> I try to get everything encapsulated. There. Well, we, we have every yearbook going back probably from the okay. 1800s to the present. I think we're missing two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And some of those yearbooks have recently been digitized, the ones from between about yes. 1950 and yes. 1990. And they're available on the library's website, in the lower, well, in the library's digital archive. Yes. Uh, okay. And so, also on the Newark Public Schools Historic Preservation Committee website also. Ah, okay. Great. Okay. So now let's let's begin looking at some of these photos. I am going yeah. to share my screen with uh, all of you. And share. Okay. Let's... Oh. oh, I should go up. Start at the beginning. <laughs> So does everybody see that? Does everybody, yes. do you guys see my, my screen? Okay, so yes. this, this is the flyer we put together for today's event, that first screen. Uh, and um, so these are just some, these, I love these photos, the, um, the photo of the track event, even though you're losing, Steve. I know. <laughs> you still included the photo, I'm very impressed by that. And the picture of the twirlers, and this is a picture of your parents in your backyard. Those are yes. all photos I'm gonna show in the program today. Okay. So let's start with some family photos, okay? This is a picture of you with your mother, right? In 19 Yes, that was, uh, I was about, uh, I don't know, maybe less than a year old there. And uh, that was when we lived on Summer Avenue, 780 Summer Avenue in Newark, uh, right by Cook Council High School. Yeah. And we lived there about a year, 1949. And then in 1950, we moved to Montclair Avenue, right around the corner. Uh, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the Montclair Avenue house is the house where you grew up and where you were living when you graduated from high school, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> Okay, so this is a picture of you with your sister. Was this your house? <laughs> yeah, that's our back stoop. If you want to use the word stoop, I think we could use that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, my so, sister Maria. And uh, that who's was- in the room uh, today. You, mess you mentioned your sister a couple times, but she's here in the room with us today. Yes, she's, yes she she's is. She's observing the uh, program. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. My t-shirt, yep. And there, oh my gosh, wow. That's, uh, that's our front stoop. And uh -huh. I guess that's one of those little blow up toys that you would punch and it maybe <laughs> punch you back. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like a little horse or something. I, I didn't know what that was at first. I had to look at it really closely. It looks like a like an inflatable horse. Yes. That they right. a lot of kids have, yeah. Um, <laughs> that toy at all? Or that? What's that, Tom? Oh, do you remember that toy at all? I, I don't. I mean, you know what I actually vaguely do? I've been looking at this picture recently, and I went back to the house recently, and I sat in that exact same spot and <laughs> took another photo uh, oh, 70 years later. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. I, I did see that. I, that. I think that's where I got this photo from, from that post. Um, so what are some memories of that house that you have? Do, do you well, a lot of that house was sort of a running joke for many years. Now that's a duplex. The, the part you can't see on the other side of me, it was a different neighbor. When we mm. first moved in there, this neighbor was uh, pretty contrary, I'll, I'll say, to put it mildly. Now picture a duplex, two different colors. Our side was white, her side was red. If my father painted our side red to match, then she would change hers to green. <laughs> so my friends to this day bust my chops about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but that was a neighbor who was there for a while and uh, she wound up getting uh, institutionalized after, after a while doing some very bizarre things. Uh, and then we had some other neighbors move in over the years and all the other ones were wonderful, absolutely wonderful people. We probably had about a half a dozen different uh, neighbors in the duplex over the years that I lived there with my parents. And uh, except for that first one, it was great. And how long did your family own that house? Uh, we bought it brand new in 1950 for $8,000. And wow. uh, my, my dad passed away in 91 and my mom uh, in about 98. So they were there until, you know, they passed wow. away. Wow. Oh, wow. So up until 98. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, they love Newark. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so this is a picture of your sister and neighbor. I yes. guess the backyard of the house, right? That's the backyard, and you didn't need much to occupy yourself back then. A little bit of a bucket with some water, uh, <laughs> a, a Keebler box. <laughs> and a hot summer day, it, yes. And, and there's actually a telephone on the ground in front of the bucket, an old rotary oh, phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I'm actually in that picture because if you look in the window behind the two girls, you can see my reflection. So you were taking the picture. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the reflection of the window in that house. Yeah, I, I see it. Yeah, right, right here. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Right there, right there. Yep. Yeah. And that was our backyard. And uh, my sister and our neighbor uh, on the other side of that fence, Sharon Smith was her name. And she lived there for a while. Okay. This is another oh. picture of your sister. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know whether you can see it on this, but your sister near the, the, the phone. There's yes, right here. you can see the, the rotary phone, which the phone number was Humble 55796. Oh, you remember your phone number, wonderful. Yes, and it was yeah. a two party I remember, line. I remember mine too, Humble 54796. Oh, great. <laughs> I, you know, I was, once, I, was, I was once working one day and got a call from somebody um, who had a, a woman who had, who had lived in Newark in the 50s and had a bet with her brother about what their phone number was in the house where they were growing up. <laughs> And so she wanted me to look it up in an old phone book, and I found it, and she won. She was very happy. Wow. <laughs> right. He had, the, he had the phone number wrong. And she was <laughs> enjoyed that I was able to. That was a few years ago. Thought, That's, uh, th that uh, we, in the beginning, we had what they called party lines. If you, right. you would share the phone number with several other families, and uh, mm -hmm. we had a, a two-party line, which meant if you picked up the phone, you could almost, you could hear somebody else talking. You would have to wait for them to finish before you could dial out on your own or receive a call. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think my mother has talked about that in the houses where she grew up. 
And if you look at that little uh, go back. table where the phone is on, they had these little tables and you could see the Newark phone book underneath. Oh, it. yes, right here. Yes, right there. Yeah. When it was yeah. much, thicker, much thicker in those days when everyone had a, had a landline and it was listed. <laughs> so now this is a picture that somebody else posted of you. One of your friends, I think, or one of your childhood friends that posted, early Steve. So oh. do you remember anything about this photo? Ta that's, that's actually busting my chops. That was not me. It was, oh, that's uh, not you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that does not look like me. Yeah, I, I didn't think it looked that much like you either, but I just thought, I thought that's some... <laughs> So, okay, sorry. I'll tell you who, Kenny Caputo posted that. My, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a, a haircut at Vinny's. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, my God. Do you remember Vinny's? <laughs> Vinny's Barbershop on Mount Prospect Avenue. There was Vinny and Tony. Uh -huh. He didn't do a great job with the haircut, but I know he had a great selection of books you could look at while you were waiting. Uh, <laughs> so that's why you went to Vinny's, right? That's why I went to Vinny's. That was probably in... Uh, around 1959 or 1960, when I was just getting out of Rich Street School. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like middle school age. Right. right. Yes. Okay. So now you posted this photo. This is a photo from the, um, the Museum of the Old First Ward. There's a photo right. from the Museum of the Old First Ward. And you posted this with a little note saying that you had relatives who lived in structures like this. So yes. um, did, you, so did you have relatives who lived in the old um, Little Italy? Yes. So they, yes. they, they, lived in, they, they lived in buildings like that. Exactly like that. And it, yeah. it is such yeah. a, an incredible memory walking up. You see those rickety stairs? You would have to keep walking up and walking up. And my yeah. aunt and uncle lived on the third floor. And uh, of course, I, I remember walking into the apartment with the high ceilings. And you could smell the, the sauce on the stove. And they were making the homemade pasta, rolling it yeah. out and cutting it. I just... Just Sounds like it. you're at my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mother was Italian, so uh, Pecorelli. By any chance, is is do you know where this building is? Is it the building on Wood Street in North uh, Lucy is, Church? Is, actually, this particular building uh, was not. This one wasn't in the first ward. This one was okay. actually on the corner of Mount Prospect Avenue and Verona Avenue. Oh, okay. On okay. the on the southeast corner. Where, where LNS Drugs is now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Our family, my family, lived in, 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 in an apartment building like this for, for a very short time. It was right mm -hmm. after the war. There were no, nothing available. And we, we moved into this, into, an, into a building like this. And mm -hmm. uh, we were there for a short time. But it was the one on Wood Street, right by St. Lucy's Church. Yes, and but, down around St. Lucy's, all these buildings look like this. Yeah. Yes. So, so this was typical of the housing in the old Little Italy. I, I, I wanted to show this because it's a lot of people don't know that Newark had a Little Italy neighborhood at one time, and it kind oh. of looked like this. Yeah. 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 The first ward. The first yeah. ward, definitely. <clears throat> and you are, and I know Steve, you are active in the museum that's there at St. Lucy's Church, right? Yes, I'm co-curator with Bob Casella. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's it's a wonderful thing. place. Very nice. Yeah, I've, I've, I've taken a couple of tours of it. I'd, I'd yeah. like to program about that the uh, museum at some point too. Mm. Okay, so this is a picture of your parents in the back yes. again. The same backyard we saw your sister in the tub with the friend. Uh, yes. <laughs> slides back. <laughs> Looks a little different. My father took down the fence. Uh, b behind them is Clifton Avenue where you can see those houses down, uh, you know, in the background there. And he took down the fence. Uh, the house behind them also that you can't see off to the right was a very old house going back to the uh, 1890s. And uh, that was a, a huge house. But that's mom and dad. Yes, relaxing. Very nice. That's nice. probably the late 50s, early 60s, I would imagine. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. There's you with your dad. Uh, looks like probably after probably college age, maybe? You were? You were uh, I was just out of high school. That was probably mm -hmm. around 67. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, me and my dad in, my, in our living room. Mm -hmm. Try to ignore the shirt I'm wearing. Oh, <laughs> very, mu very much a uh, relic of the time, yes. <laughs> I wasn't looking so much as the shirt as I was at, at, at your dad. And I said, you know, it's just so funny when you see pictures from this era they don't smile. No. <laughs> I mean, we have so many of them wiped out ourselves. And, you know, you say, 
why weren't you smiling? <laughs> yeah, if, I think I have one picture of him actually smiling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're, some people just don't smile for photos. That's true. Right. No. That, that, you know, Steve, that shirt uh, in that photo, it looks like you could be a character in the Moth Squad. You can <laughs> yeah, or Star Wars or something. Yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. or Star, Star Trek. Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Trek, yeah. right. Star Wars was in right. So this, oh. I think, was oh, a little. <laughs> this, I think, was a little after the '60s. It looks more like might might be the early '70s. It is. That's the that's early '70s. You in yes. the back, right? Yeah. That's me there. That in the front center is my friend Kenny Caputo, and he's probably on this uh, today too. Uh -huh. uh, Jerry Russo back right, okay. and uh, Bruce Palmer uh, behind Kenny in the middle, and mm -hmm. Kenny's brother Bobby uh, to Kenny's left. Yes, that was his wedding day. At 14 Manchester. Oh, yeah, I had to I had to look up Manchester Place. I didn't even realize there was a Manchester Place in Newark. I thought, where's Manchester? Yeah. And it's like right in, alongside um, uh, Branchbrook Park in the far yeah. north, yes. right near the right. Belgian border. Yeah. My husband's um, my husband's nieces uh, live there at 28. As a matter of fact, they uh, they still own the house. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I remember. Not block, oh, Manchester that's, block. Yeah. I was gonna say, I, I was one of the ushers in Kenny's wedding and I, I took a ride on my motorcycle before the wedding, which wasn't a real good thing to do. And I got back just in the nick of time. <laughs> he, was, he was so uh -huh. aggravated. I could see like the veins <laughs> popping out of his head. He so I bet, I bet, yeah. <laughs> Nervous enough on his wedding day, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now this is you, um, around the same time that picture with your dad was taken. This is uh, just from the mid 60s. So you have been in college probably when this photo was taken? Uh, yes, I was at Fairleigh Dickinson by that point, right? Yeah. And uh, that was in, I uh, believe that was in our living room. And I was sitting, I think, next to our stereo. And I had like a rack with the albums and the 45s uh, mm -hmm. near me. Okay. 66. Oh. And this is much later. This is not the 50s or 60s. This is your daughter in a. Yes. Uh, an ironbound fire station. Would do you know the firefighter that's there? Um, yes, that's my good friend Bruce Palmer. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I was just included in the family section. It was the latest family one. I thought it was nice to show yeah. you later. Yeah, he was a captain down there on. Uh, it was on uh, Ferry Street, right by uh, Fornos, right around the oh. corner, and that's his uh, oh. Dalmatian Sadie. So that, is that the, was that the Prospect Street? Uh, yes. Station? Yeah. I yes, know it that. was. So that's yeah. just a couple of blocks from where I'm sitting right now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And there is you um, with, your fa with your childhood home in the background. You're standing alongside it. Uh, it was taken recently. Um, I don't know yes. exactly. Years ago, right? And you're, uh, you're within the, the last year. Now, oh, okay. that wall where I'm leaning against, right behind me, you might, I'm not sure if you have any of the pictures, maybe they're later in the, in the uh, clip, but there was a house that was there that was built in 1907 by the same architect that built Rich Street School and most of the elementary schools and high schools in the city, except Barringer. Uh, Elbrith was the architect's name, and I believe he, he lived in that house mm. for, for several years. And that house was also on the cover and they did a feature story of a, a, on Better Homes and Gardens. Oh, nice. It was an incredible house. My friend Howard Toffey lived in it for a long time. Oh, I and saw that a, post. Yeah, I saw the post where you talked about that. I, I didn't include that photo in this presentation, unfortunately. It, it had a ballroom I saw that, that post, 150 yes. people and mm. a wraparound library around the top. It was just the, uh, stained glass windows uh, that went the whole length of the house. It was just incredible. Beautiful home. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I saw the, my the house is in the here. background. Uh, you can see it, second house down on the corner. So the, the kind of gray house, right? This yes. From the, not, not the one right on the corner, but the one in from it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So that is, okay, so now that, those were the family photos. So now we're going to get to Barringer High, where we can talk about Barringer High School. We have lots of pictures here. Okay, there is, a, there is the cover of your 1966 Athenium, Barringer High School yearbook. Yes. Mm -hmm. Graduate, you posted the photo, you posted a photo of the cover. So mm -hmm. look inside. Well, it's not really the photo. This is, there are some other pictures. This yes. Is picture. Now this is, this is what I was talking about before. You were, uh, you're both kind of historians of Barringer High School. This was taken long before you were a student at Barringer High. Yeah. 
right? Uh, yes. The Bebop Babes. Do either of you know what the Bebop Babes are? I'm going to let Roseanne feel that one. She could feel yeah. the Bebop Babes and a few other groups. Yeah, that was, yeah. you know, that, that was the fad at that time. Uh, everybody wanted to be part of, uh, of, of a club. Of, uh, and I said, and I, would use, I always put that in, in quotes. And um, we did it. And we were, we were the debutantes. And then on the other end of the block were... Um, the uh, the Latin something or others, and everybody had to pick a, a, a logo for their back, and yeah. um, then and that was it. And of course, our fathers were so strict; we never got to do anything. But um, but, it was but you looked tough, feeling, right? <laughs> feeling yeah. that you were part of a club. Yeah. This photo reminds me of the musical Grease. It's the yes. I, oh, exactly. I look at this photo. Yeah. Now, yeah. That photo is also from the Barringer archives. That's where that ah. originated from. Yeah. I'm guessing. Okay. Uh, now. A soda, a soda shop called The Blue, which was near. Yeah. Was, mm -hmm. was, that, was that still there when you were a student, Steve? Yes. Was that Roseanne, still there? Yeah, yeah. Roseanne was there. And it was The Blue. When I was there, it was still The Blue. And uh, Roseanne may recognize some of the people in that photo. Um. This, this, it looks like my class. This looks like one of my class, Joanne Pepe, and that looks like it could be Manny. I'm not sure. Oh, really? But, uh, oh. But um, cool. that was, it was a great place. It was, it, was, it was our hangout. It was there. We went for lunch, and uh, yeah. it was a great place. Yeah, okay. Uh, I wonder what's on that jukebox. Yeah. Uh, I can't see. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, riding the bus. This doesn't look like a school bus. It looks like a city bus. Uh, this also, I think, comes from the Museum of the First Ward. But this is, um, uh, I think, this. I, I think these are Barringer students getting on one of the city buses. And there's a. You know, of, um, this, do you remember this, these buses? We were. This is my class. The, yeah. I know know both of the girls in here. This is my class, and we went on a trip, and it was in connection with um, uh, our English class, and we all had to we all had to do verses from uh, and make different verses in present time using uh, Canterbury Tales. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what this was. And each like each group had to pick a different verse and, and write, do a story about it. And then we went on the bus. That's what that that's what this I don't remember where we were going. But I remember oh, being, I was, that was that was my next question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so you but you remember at this trip, you just don't remember where you were going. So yeah. we're, yeah. Yes, so that, that photo is also from the Barringer archives. Ah, okay. okay. Even though it looks like, oh, there we go. So now uh, this, this is a, uh, a postcard of the old Barringer. Yes. Uh, I included this because, Steve, you were a student at both the old building that was torn down while you were a student replaced with the newer building in the early 60s. Yes. And you were a student at both of these buildings. This is the, the student, this was the building that you started as a student, and this opened around 1898, I believe, um, yeah. and it no, yeah. stayed until the early 60s. And Roseanne, mm -hmm. you were a student at this time. At this yeah. Time as well. yes. yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. You can see the park, how beautiful it was. You know, it was yeah. like a campus, like a college campus. And the building in the summer, I mean, what, even while we were there, Ivy would grow up the whole yes. side of the building, and it, it actually looked like a college like a college building it was it was so beautiful yeah it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful building it was a beautiful yeah. building now roseanne you you remember some of the debates about tearing this building down there was some opposition when oh yeah yeah there, there was a right? lot of there was all none of the students wanted the building to be torn down with the exception of a few but none of them and we were all writing letters and uh, you know protesting if, if you really want to call it protesting <laughs> but but um then i think um a committee was formed later on and i think it was uh while pat Restaino was uh principal there and that they actually formed north ward citizens something or other education thing where they gathered a couple of uh dignitaries in and uh, did an actual um, survey of the building. Uh, the building, the building was in disrepair. It was, it was actually, some of it was actually dangerous. You couldn't walk in the, in, in the basement or the first floor. Some of the ceilings were actually caved. But yeah. we loved it. We didn't want, we didn't want it to go. We loved it. We said, just yeah. fix it. Yeah. Just fix it. But yeah. you know, it was, it was, it was past its prime. It, it was, but uh, a gorgeous, gorgeous building. 
and uh, built and designed all upon uh, Greek mythology because that was Dr. Barringer was a student of Greek mythology, and um, he called it the Acropolis on the Hill, and that's you know that's what it was. And yeah, then, yeah beautiful building. And between that um, that same year is when they started Branchburg Park. So between Branchburg Park starting up and Barringer being built and the cathedral being built. It was just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. Gorgeous yeah. place. So, so the uh, this building was originally known as Newark High School, but it didn't become yeah. yes. about ten yeah. years after it opened. Uh, In, uh, it originally 1838, only it was founded as Newark High School, and then yeah. around 1907, it, it uh, Dr. William Barringer, and it was it was uh, named around 1907 or 1908. It became Barringer. yeah, yeah. 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 And you know, when they put this up, there was a lot of opposition to putting the building at that location because this was back in 1899. Everything was centered at Broad and Market. And a lot of the citizens of the city felt that it was going to be too difficult for the kids to get there. And they yeah, were sure. dead against it. But Barringer, Dr. Barringer, he pushed it and, and prevailed and, uh, and it worked out well. So, yeah, the yeah. old the old Newark High School was on Washington, Washington and Linden Streets, right near where Rutgers Newark is now. So much more toward the center of town. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like Roseanne was saying, if you were in the basement of this building uh, and you were over six <laughs> two, you kind of had to duck a little bit. Oh, really? <laughs> well, what would you? <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, there was no gym in the original building, and they had built an annex, right. uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they had a bridge connecting. It, on the left of that photo, there was a bridge going to an annex that connected yeah. to the gym. And then that eventually started falling apart. And when it rained, you couldn't even have gym because they had these skylights and all the water would come through onto the floor. So it was- Oh, wow. Yeah, so there were a lot of problems. The bridge, itself, the bridge itself became its own entity. Yes. That's where you would hook up with people. And alongside of each of the walls is where a lot of those trophies that are on display in our archive room is a lot of where those trophies were on display. I have a photo of that. That might be my next photo, actually. Yeah. This is, this is a photo taken from the other side of the high school with right. the, from the front of uh, Sacred Heart Cathedral. That yes. shows the other side of the old Barringer High School. So, yeah. Okay. And then this is a, um, oh, this is a f uh, ticket for a football game. Mm -hmm. Go to the yes. uh, this is the photo you were talking yes. about the, 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 yes. uh, with the trophies and the the corridor from the main part of the school to the gym. This is this yes. is the from there. Yeah, that's the that's the bridge. Yeah. Right. Okay. Those are and both that's... from the the class of nineteen fifty four, I think, if I remember right. Yeah, that's Pat Forte and yeah. Helen Eng. Yes. Oh. Yeah, okay. Helen Helen Eng, right. Mm. So this is a uh, this is a picture of a football game. Did you go to a? I'm guessing you went to a lot of football games, Steve. Just about all of them, including yeah. this one. Um, you got the ticket up, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that one there. Yeah, that's that's my uh, that was the year my senior year, and uh, mm. there's our, our twirlers, uh, Roz, Kathy. Yeah. Oh, you remember? Oh, you remember uh, some of their names? That's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> with that uh, cathedral in the background again. Yeah, showed that. So this is when they were tearing the old school down. Uh, right. When they were preparing to build the new school. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Then this this is the picture we were talking about before. I really like this picture because it has the new school in the front, mm -hmm. the old school behind it. And then Sacred Heart Cathedral behind that. This this comes from one of the yearbooks you said. Yeah, sixty five yearbook. So this was the first year that the new school was open, right? I, I Actually, sixty four was the first year. September of sixty four was the first right. year it opened. When when it opened, okay, yeah. Right. So. So I entered the old school in September of sixty three, and I was there for one year, and then. Uh, into the new uh, school in September of 64. If you look at that picture of the old Barringer behind there, uh, to the left of the main building, you could see the gym annex. Oh, yeah, and, the annex. Yeah, and right here? Uh, you can't quite see, yes, exactly yeah. right there, Tom. Yeah, and you could kind of see the skylights on the roof, which gave it a lot of light, but after a while, when it was a heavy rainstorm, it was... <laughs> 
It was a puddle. Disaster. You could swim. You could have swim class for Jim. Okay, so now now I'm going to share some pictures of the North Ward. We finished with that. You both grew up in the North Ward, so you should be able to talk a little bit about that. So now this, I love this picture. Again, this is another picture that reminds me of Greece. This is like the girls. Right out of Happy Birds. So um, are these are these people you knew, Steve? Uh, no, these are some of Bob Casella's friends. This photo is from the Museum of the Old First Ward, and that's some of uh, his contemporaries. Okay, yeah. This looks, like, been, looks like a little before your time as a teenager. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. I love the the, uh, the, the ha some of the haircuts on some of these guys. This one, this one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's around 7th Avenue. Seven, oh, so, oh, so Little Italy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about this? This guy's a real character sitting. Same up place, same area, off Seventh Avenue, and his name was Yogi Nizavachia. Okay. Was this kind of a typical street scene with all these cars? Kind of this one's double parked over here. Very typical with the cobblestone yeah. streets. You'll notice too mm -hmm. that they had back then. Yeah. yeah. yeah everybody double parked. Yeah. <laughs> Bloomfield Avenue had a, a center island in it, and everybody would just park up on that island and just, you know, leave their cars there. Oh, wow. I think we might have lost Roseanne. Hopefully she'll come back. And oh. Look. So now this oh. was a picture. Um, you had posted something, uh, a po photo of Paula Luongo. Died. Yes, that's her. In, uh, this was her, her head her from high school? Yeah. Yes, 1958. And this was someone you knew? Yes, she was on the Barringer Alumni Association with me and Roseanne, and yes. she, unfortunately, she just passed away recently from the coronavirus. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, but that's her, and she was a twirler also on the football team, oh, and that's her that's studying cool. in the park. Okay, and this is a recent picture of Branchbrook Park, but I wanted to, to you to talk a little bit about what it was like, because that was kind of your backyard, right? Yes. Growing up in the North Ward, you probably spent a lot of time in the park. Talk a little bit about what, what that was like for both of you, what that was okay. like. Okay, now that's that's near the Belleville end of the park, and that is called the Second River right there, where you see that water flowing. And uh, during cherry, obviously cherry blossom time in April or May, April. And uh, when that water sometimes was a little bit lower, it was almost like maybe an inch or two of water in there. We would go into the channel and just sort of wade across and then come up on the other side and pull ourselves up and walk on the other side. But that park was so beautiful. And I, and I ran track and cross country for Barringer and even before and after. I know every inch of that park. I've run through every, every little bridle path. And uh, actually, uh, not too far from there is another spot called the Four Diamonds, uh, which is a baseball field uh, that a lot of little league, uh, you know, we played there as kids. And it's uh, maybe a half a mile from this spot. But uh, that's really right by Mill Street in Belleville. It's about uh, oh, okay. Okay. 100 yeah. yards away from it. It's a beautiful photo. Really yeah, lovely. that is. Yeah. You got a shot of that. Yeah, there was it's a bridge uh, overhead that, I, that, that that shot was taken yeah. from. Yeah, this one, right this there. One here. Actually, there's another one. You could just see the edge of it in the very front. Oh, right here. Right there, right. Right there, OK. Yeah. OK. This. Um, this part of the park, um, every year since since we were married, I don't think we've ever missed a year of not seeing the cherry of seeing the cherry blossoms. And we yeah. took our kids, we took our parents, and yes. just got there and got parked the car and just walked all over the place, uh, just taking it all in because it was just just so beautiful, so beautiful. Yeah. My yeah. mother couldn't wait for to go riding through there. I remember one of one of Newark's best kept secrets. Yes, yes. You don't, if you don't live in Newark, you don't really know about it. So That's our, right. Our people, yeah. Or yeah, the same designer that designed Central Park uh, designed Branchbrook Park. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the sons, his sons, the sons. Uh, yeah. So this is this is funny. You um, this is a catechism <laughs> class in Sacred Heart. Oh, okay. <laughs> you labeled this. You you get, came up with a funny um, caption for this when you posted it on Facebook. I think you were calling it the the uh, the blackboard jungle or something. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It looks like it kind of looks like that. Although you were well, well middle yeah. school age. Yeah. There's there's a few people <laughs> in that photo I'm not going to name. Uh, who became near do wells to, to put a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And I think I agree with that. <laughs> Just <laughs> makes him a bad person. <laughs> and this, this was at Sacred Heart? Yes. Yeah, OK. Okay. This I wanted you to talk about. I'm, I've never been to the festival it's, that takes place at St. Lucie's in October, but is this uh -huh. they do every year, a Cinderella wedding? Is that a common? That's what that was. And it was just actually before the feast of St. Gerard, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a week before somebody had gotten married. And I just happened to be there setting up, you know, for the feast. And they happened to come by and I just took a, a photo of it. And, yeah, but um, that, that's not a regular thing at the church, though. That's no. just. Yeah, it's just something that they did. Yeah, yeah I've never seen it before or since. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. I was just wondering because I just saw this. I thought it was an interesting photo. I didn't know whether, again, I've never been to the festivals. So I didn't know whether this was a regular feature there. No. Um, oh, so I have pictures of some some businesses that I went yes. to. The Woodside Diner. Do you remember the Woodside Diner? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, some relatives of mine owned it back in the day. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't really the best food in town for miles around. <laughs> yeah, well, there were so many good diners, but it was decent yeah. food. <laughs> it good was French good. fries. It was good. Good fries. And Ed's Diner was another place you used to hang out? As a... Yes. Uh, that was on Heller Parkway and That's 6th Park. Street. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was a big hangout. Like after you were out for the night doing whatever you were doing, you'd always stop at Ed's Diner for a burger and some fries with gravy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Another place that could tell a few stories, but yeah, that was another. When I moved out of my house on Montclair Avenue, I moved into a garden apartment on Forest Hill Parkway. And, okay. Uh, that was right around the corner from where I uh, lived, so I didn't do too much cooking. I no. just sort of meandered over there. Yeah. <laughs> so Frank and Pete Seafood. Do you yes. remember Frank and Pete? Yeah, that was on Mount Prospect Avenue, down the street from my house. And mm -hmm. from walking distance to where I lived, you could find anything you wanted, from Frank and Pete's Fish Market to the deli, a shoemaker, a bank, a, you know, a barber shop, uh, the little candy store with the pinball machine. But my friend Kenny Caputo had this little ruler from Frank and Pete's, and he gave it to me, and I kept it. But uh, yeah, they had some great seafood down there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that place too well. I don't yeah, it was uh, right, right on my Weber, project. Weber's, Hardware. Weber's Hardware. Do you both remember Weber's Hardware? Mount yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Matter of fact, uh, Weber's is still there. They moved their location a little bit from where they were. And Mr. Weber just passed away recently. And I think he was in his late 90s. And he was still wow. working there uh, one or two days a week just for a few hours. Oh, so this, this is still in business then? Weber. Yes, it's still there. Instead okay, of the 836 Mount Prospect, Mount Prospect it's a little further uh, north. Oh, okay. Skip to Parsons Coal Company. Did you live in, um, Was you, were the, either of the houses you lived in, either one of you heated by coal? It's not uh, something so much anymore, yeah. here at least. Yeah, the yeah, house next husband, door had coal. My, husband, my husband's was, his house was fueled by coal, but uh, I don't remember. As a matter of fact, the one the one apartment that we were in, I think, was they called they used to call it a cold water flat, which meant mm. that there wasn't there wasn't any heat. And then shortly after we moved in, they 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 did that. But um, I don't. It was steam heat that they put in, so I don't I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah we had my, gas my grandmother's house was cold. I used to. Yeah. You know, I used to love when the guy used to come. I used to go down there with my aunt. We used to watch him shovel all the coal in. Yeah, yeah the, the coal uh, trucks would come around next door. And if the house was even or lower than, than the truck, they could just put these chutes out and the roll chute. the coal into the bins. But right. this house was up on a hill. So the, the people oh. who delivered the coal had to fill these sacks up on their back and then carry Ooh. the coal um, oh, wow. into the bins and just dump it in there. So oh my goodness! Quite a job. I bet yeah. they love delivering to that house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is pharmacy. Around. Yes. Yeah. That's still, still there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And they used to have a little soda fountain in there, and you could buy. We bought our candy there. It was three for a quarter, and then we would go to the Elwood Theater and uh, watch some movies, double feature with cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> I have some stuff about movie theaters. This is a uh, movie listings from May of 1955, and the Elwood is here. Yeah. Listed at the top. And some mm -hmm. other, they also have some other, not, not all 
in Newark. There was some from around Essex County, the Paper Mill Playhouse. I didn't realize they ever showed movies at the Paper Mill Playhouse, but they have, they have that there in the Milburn Theater and some others. Yeah, the, the Kent Theater was, was listed. Uh, this was my haunt, the Regent. We used to love oh, yeah? to the Regent. Yep. That was on Broadway. Yeah. I think this is probably before both of your times is Fred McMurray and Warner Baxter were in movies that I think is probably from the thirties or forties, but this is, but it was still around in the fifties and sixties, I think. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> this is the Elwood theater. You mentioned this. Mm -hmm. so, um, yes. Steve, you said this was your, the first date you took. <laughs> the first date was to the West side story at the Elwood theater. Yes, it was in, uh, I guess it was uh, May or June of 63. Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Forest Hill Theater, that was another one, right? Yes. Now that theater wa was defunct way before I was even around, I think. Uh, but it was on Mount Prospect Avenue and Heller Parkway. On the corner. Yeah, that doesn't sound familiar to me either. No. Okay. All right. This is one of your uh, playing historian rather than... Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, actually, on that, uh, that theater, the Forest Hill Theater, my friend Kenny Caputo had gone in there before they tore the building down. Uh -huh. And uh, he found some little ticket stubs from, from the movie theater and some billboards, some posters. Really? He, yeah. He st uh, I have the little, he sent me copies of the ticket stubs, which I still have from the 30s, 1930s. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now th th there are some clubs too. Uh, the Shangri La, are you familiar? Oh, yeah. With yes. Yes. You both remember the Shangri-La. Yeah. yeah, before it was the Shangri-La, it was called the Silhouette. And uh, they also had some good entertainment. And then oh, it I think became I have, the Shangri-La. I think I have something, I think I have an ad. Yeah, this is this was the place then. The Silhouette, Martha Daniels yeah. Silhouette. That was yeah, the they had some big name entertainment. You see Jay and the Americans who were a top hit of the t top uh, tune at the time. And uh, there's, you know, uh, some other big groups. But yeah, that was the Silhouette. That was in the earlier 60s, late 50s. Okay, so that became the Shangri-La. Right. And yeah, moving yeah, see, oh, I see. The, I noticed that the address was the same. Okay. Um, the Hialeah Club, you remember that? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> you were probably kind of down young down. when you were growing up to go to places like this. I just thought I'd show it because I, I thought you figured you'd probably remember. Well, it was still around when I was, uh, when I was young. Uh, the, the, actually, you know what? You just said, I just noticed the address, 15 Bloomfield Avenue. I think that that coal company was also on 15 Bluefield Avenue. Oh, was it? Okay. Same <laughs> place. Okay. And it turned it into a club. Okay. <laughs> I have some pictures. You have a lot of track pictures that you share. So I wanted to show some of that. Barringer oh. Runners from 1960. Yeah. Your senior yeah. year. I think uh, this is you, isn't it? Isn't yes, it is. Good eye. That's what I thought. And uh, the, the person ready to start us there is John Casella. That's Bob Casella's brother, who's the, the Bobby's the curator of the museum. That's his oh, brother. Oh, sure. Tom. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, yeah, that's he, his brother. He was the coach. He yeah. was my coach. Right. And that's the new Barringer, of course. Uh, behind yeah, us. in the background. And yeah. Roseanne was mentioning about the Mendelssohn statue. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where we're heading for at the start of yeah. that race. And then we would turn around at the Mendelssohn statue and come back. And the total uh, distance would be 600 yards for that race. Oh. Okay. This is a picture, uh, Barringer versus Orange in 1964. I guess you were a sophomore then or junior? Uh, let's I guess see, you junior. I was a junior. Junior. Uh, junior. Okay. And that was the end of the park, closer to Heller Parkway, sort of near the Belleville line. Hmm. Uh, that's okay. that's uh, where we <laughs> had the cross country course. Now that course, was two and a half miles, and part of it actually ran on a bridle path uh, by where the subway is, where they used to have uh, the horses running back here back in the day. But it yeah. was an un unpaved, uh, inundating road. Yeah, there was um, there were actually stables there at that at that, that oh, one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this was the photo that I liked that you uh, we included on the flyer. Um, it's from 1964, 880 yard run at City Stadium. Yes. You're watching the race, but you included the picture. It's a great picture. It's a nice action shot. It's yeah, that's why I thought it was. Uh, and actually, I I, I lost. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still a good beaten. picture. Though. That was the city meet. Yeah. Now this is this is uh, Barringer Track Awards in 1966. This is you right there, right? Yes, that's me. Yeah. Yes, that's the uh, senior awards every year. The Father and Son Association would would hand out the awards uh, during a little ceremony, which was nice. 
And I'm who's, still in touch with most of those people in that photo. Yeah. Oh, Steve, okay. who's, who's the person in the dark suit in the front? Ah, Mr. Verducci. This guy? Yeah. Okay, that's what I said. He, I'm saying he looks familiar. I couldn't place it. Yeah, Verducci. Frank Verducci. Yeah. Frank, yeah. He was, the, he was the track coach? And football. Both. And football. Okay. Yeah. And this was a plaque you received. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. And back, uh, back in the day when I could still get off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a later picture from when you were a student at Fairleigh Dickinson. That's where you went after you graduated from Barringer. Yeah, that was, uh, that was an interesting. Right there. Uh, what was that, Tom? I was just pointing you out right there. Yeah, that's it. Yes, that was, uh, that was a reality check. You know, when you go from the high school to the college level, you think you're a big shot, but then everybody uh, else is, is better than you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had one of the best teams in, in the country, and uh, it was... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, great. So the world, I had a few, just a few pictures of the world at large from the 1960s I just wanted to ask you about. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I just thought this was so funny. Now, this guy in the middle, I guess, is Chang Lee. I, yes. I don't know who that was. But Joe Pesci is also in this big, before he was famous. That's right. Pesci right there. Talk a little bit about this picture. Who are these people? And other than Joe Pesci, I mean, who are these people? Roseanne? Roseanne there? You're muted, Roseanne. I got to unmute you. Okay. There you go. I, you know, I only recognize Pesci. I mean, these other ones, they all look familiar. You don't yeah, have Chang, any fun, Steve? Yeah, Chang Lee made, they, they did cut a couple of records. Of course, they, they didn't go very far in the top yeah. 100. They might have made 103. So he was a local <laughs> entertainer, Chang Lee? Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. I just didn't know who he was. And, and Joe Pesci apparently sang with him then. Joe he Pesci, sang. Boy, he, Belleville. He did a lot of... Uh, Who's uh, Roseanne? Did he play a lot with Frank Vincent? They had like a yeah, duo. That's what I, mean. I, I don't think that any of these fellows look like Frankie Vincent. No. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. So this is this is your draft card from mm, June '67, wow. uh, when I guess you would have turned 18. So yeah. Um, so I, I, you're a member of the Vietnam generation, and so. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, that's something that um, has gotten a yeah. lot of attention uh, in the world at large. Uh, what was that like? I mean, that was kind of hanging over a lot of people's heads. You know, if they, um, that was a thing that people, a lot of kids had to worry, had to think about. Yeah, that was during the peak years of the war. <laughs> and at, at, I mean, every day on the, on the news, you would see, you know, 200 killed, 200 killed, oh, you know. Yeah. Quickly. And uh, I got the, uh, you had to register when you were 18, so I went down, and I was fully expecting to, to get drafted. Because, but I, and there was other people there who were trying everything they could think of to get out of, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, they did the physical. I was in pretty good condition, I thought, but I, I actually am a blind in one eye. So they rejected me on that. So oh. I wound up not going, which was, was very shocking. I figured they would take me for some capacity even if it was clerical you know I would uh, I would go but I never wound up going but I, that was just my registration certificate but it was yeah I remember my parents being very upset thinking I was going to be going and my friends and uh, it was very uh, I mean some people of course went to Canada if if uh, if you were married with a child I believe you were exempt there were certain ways that you could be uh, I forget the category it might have been uh, 4A, uh, 1A was, was drafted, and then there was different categories after that. 2S, yeah. 3S, you know. yeah. 4F was you couldn't go at all for a yeah. debilitating condition. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's basically my registration card. Okay. And then one last photo I wanted to show. Now, this is the uh, Newark Rebellion, July of 67. Newark Rock, right. some people refer to it as. Um, I, you don't include a lot of photos like this in your Facebook, but you did post this last summer, uh, on mm -hmm. uh, last July. Um, we're still living, I mean, you were in college, but you were still, your parents were still on Montclair Avenue when you were probably home from summer, right? Did you, um, can you talk a little bit about what you remember from that time? Yeah, uh, actually it was uh, July of 67, so I was, uh, 
out of, I was off from college, but I was working down on Wright Street and McCarter Highway in Newark at Jersey Testing Laboratories. And uh, I, uh, you know, when, when, the, when the rebellion started, I, they sent everybody home. I think we were home for the week. And uh, being in North Newark, we were sort of isolated from the Central Ward, which is where all this activity was happening. Mm -hmm. And the National Guard had come in and the state police and they set up roadblocks on Bloomfield Avenue and certain other areas that would prohibit anybody from going into the Central Ward unless you showed ID that you lived there or had a business there or something. And, uh, and Roseanne's husband, Ron, was a police officer in Newark at the time. And that's actually him in that photo. I guess. Oh, he really? Oh, wow. Yeah. The fellow where the two guys are standing together, he's the one on the right. I oh, think right. the one okay. on the left might be Walter. I'm not sure. And then the fellow who's standing behind by the store, that's, uh, he, he's dead now also. His name is Bobby Donnell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Tom, it was, uh, I mean, it was just crazy times. I think it was 26 oh, killed, I don't know how many were wounded. Uh, the, the whole part of the Central Ward was basically burned out uh, back then. Uh, and uh, I guess Newark is, you know, rebuilding, I think, pretty nicely. But it was a, it was a, it was a tough time. And uh, the state police had used, uh, and uh, the National Guard were using Newark Stadium sort of as a compound. Uh, they had like their vehicles in there, uh, armored, armored vehicles. Uh, yeah, I guess it lasted about a week, 10 days. Mm -hmm. And all across the country, it was sort of, uh, I guess, uh, Detroit, uh, Watts might have been a year or two before that. But uh, Yeah, Detroit was around the same month, like the week before, week after. Yeah. So. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to I wanted to bring that one. So I will that that's the end of the those are the last the last photo. So oh. share and bring you back. So there the screen is gone. Um, oh, so somebody was asking uh, the regent was on Broadway. I, I'm just looking at some photos we have in the, uh, the chat box. Roseanne you said you used to go to the regent was on Broadway. On You're, Broadway. Yes, we used to go there and you used to get uh, free dishes if you kept going yeah. every you got all different kinds of free dishes. You made a set. <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, on um, Broadway near what? Near what? What side street? Um, Webster. 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 Okay. Broadway. Well, actually, it was Bloomfield Avenue that turned into Broadway, and the street bef just before the theater was Webster Street. Okay. And my colleague Dale says um, Joe Pesci now is Joe Dogs and has wonderful jazz CDs with Hammond B3 genius Joey DeFrancesco. Now I. <laughs> Yeah, we, as we were talking before the program started, yeah, I didn't even know that he sang. I mean, I'd seen, I know he was a character in the movie Jersey Boys, and he knew them. I, I was just known him as an actor. I didn't realize he sang at all. So that's good. Yeah. 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 So, and I'm going to see if, I'm not sure there are any. Ah, I'm, I'm, my colleague also says, as children, you had to learn your home phone number, often by kindergarten. Yeah, I, I remember memorizing yeah. my number as a kid. <laughs> Today, nobody really remembers phone numbers because you don't have to. You have them contacts in your phone. You just, you know, yeah. your name. Yeah. Um, oh, and my colleague Beth has uh, included a link in the chat box with Barringer yearbooks. We have 56 that are digitized. So if you mm -hmm. want to look at the digital uh, Barringer yearbooks, you can go to that link in the chat. Um, let's see. I guess that's about it. Um, oh, um, uh, also my friend Beth was, uh, as you know, Steve, you were a, uh, student at two, at two different versions of Barringer High. Beth was a student at two different versions of Science High. She started on, um, oh. uh, it's down when it was downtown, and then oh. like, moved up yeah. to North, so I guess that's uh, Street, yeah. right? Was, the, was she there while Pat Rustano was uh, principal? Or was the, no, 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 that was no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Beth Beth was there like maybe, what, 10 years ago, Beth? <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah. Taylor, yeah, she's she's well known. Christine Taylor, she's still around. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I guess that's it. Those are the only questions. Well, thank you very much. This was terrific. Yes, so, terrific little very, uh, very, presentation. Very nice. Very that was nice. fun. Oh, and oh, um, Cheryl mentions that uh, Pat Rustano did not become principal of Barringer until 1968. Prior to that, he was vice principal at Arts High School. Uh, oh, and, oh, and Phil Yorish is sharing his 
uh, childhood phone number, Bigelow, 220. <laughs> so, so I guess yeah. it remembers their childhood phone number. Yeah. No, I might have been. I might have been thinking that that was information that Pat gave me about about how um, the the committee that was formed. I could have sworn he told me he was on it though. But it, I, you know, I could be. Maybe he was a yeah. guy something at the time. So, okay. yeah. Well, thank thank you very much for this. this well, was thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank thank cool. It was fun. Oh no! Somebody somebody thought it started at two. Okay, well, thank oh. <laughs> and thank you to everyone who showed up today. Um, if you want to know more about any programs that we have at, for the Newark Public Library, go to uh, the calendar at npl.org, the Newark Public Library's website. And thank you. And, have and a good day. Uh, Tom, and, you have um, an after a morning or an afternoon free or a couple of hours, and you'd like to come and visit our archive room? Just let Steve know or let me know. We'd be glad to show you around. It's it's really an amazing place. Okay. Oh, and we also have we also have some um, videos for the public library, youtube.com slash Newark Public Library. And uh, we will be, um, and anyway, so thank you very much, everyone. And also visit the Barringer Archive. And uh, okay. safe.